Crypto has been on a tear in 2024, 25, 26, and you might be on the sidelines thinking, man, I wish I could make some money like that, or oh, I wish I went into the crypto markets uh, back when I first heard about it, and now I'm kicking myself. And so you might be new in investing in cryptocurrencies, and you might want to make some extra money or maybe even life-changing money. Well, in this video, I'm going to lay down six crucial tips into being successful in this bull run. My name is Aaron. I'm just a cowboy exploring the wild west of cryptocurrency. My first taste of Bitcoin or crypto really was in 2017. I got shaken out of the markets and I learned some lessons from then. Then I got back into it in 2020 and rode the bull run up and I earned my first Bitcoin into about six months of trading. It's very well documented. I have three videos on it. And that was years ago. And I learned a lot since then. Now, after that bull run came the bear run, and I and I lost a ton of money there. And so there's a lot of experience and knowledge that I'm taking into this bull run. And I'd like to pass off some of that knowledge with you as well. If you want to know more about these videos or my journey, I'm no expert. I'm just, I'm just I'm a YouTuber with a cowboy hat who's scared of horses, <laughs> who doesn't like the outdoors, right? And I just love cryptocurrency. I'm the weird friend that you have, just always searching. Been I've been telling all my friends, and I, I've probably been telling you to get into crypto, even during the bear market, even though it was hard. But here we are now, and you're probably hearing other people make just this crazy amount of money around you. And you're like, how can I get a piece of this? You might be struggling. You might have a couple hundred dollars here, a couple thousand dollars here, willing to invest and take massive risk and be willing to kiss it all for the chance at making more money back. And I applaud you for this courage, but I want to help you not get wrecked in these markets because it happens to a lot of people. It happened to me. I live to tell the tale. And so here are the six tips for being successful in this bull run. And this is only for new people. These tips are meant to be bent or broken if you have time in the market, if you're an expert. Um, you, you can manipulate these tips. But for someone who's brand new, who's scared about the volatility, who's scared about just it going dropping down to zero or getting into the wrong coin or even what to do for the first time, these are general tips that will serve anybody when I'll be coming out with a series of videos that will help um, with these particularities for every coin or, or whatever, however you want to get into the markets. But there's a lot of wealth to be made out there and there's a lot more bull run to be had. And so let's get right into it. The first tip is if you are brand new, you need to know this. Watch Bitcoin. Okay. You have to watch Bitcoin because Bitcoin controls the whole market. If the bull run is happening, it's only because Bitcoin is running up. People are filing in and piling money into Bitcoin. If Bitcoin goes down, the bull run is trash, crashing down with it. The Bitcoin and bull run are synonymous, okay? So you have to watch Bitcoin. What do you mean by watch Bitcoin? I mean, you have to just just watch it. You don't have to learn all the TA and the trends. You, have, you don't have to try to mark where it's going. Just mark what's happening in the in the news, in the narrative, what will, a lot of people in crypto will say the narratives. It's the, uh, it's the common knowledge or common atmosphere or sense that people have or likability that people have of Bitcoin. I'm trying to use kind of lizard brain terms. I try to keep it simple here. So, for instance, we have to know that the ETF adoption is set to keep driving up Bitcoin price. And that's a huge narrative here where uh, the ETFs for Bitcoin are now piling in these pension funds, these hedge funds, these huge wealth management funds are going into it like BlackRock or whatever else. So that means a lot of money is pouring into Bitcoin. And so I personally believe that Bitcoin is on a melting up trajectory. It's going to be melting up for, for a very, very long time. The gold rush has started. There's a lot of other uh, smarter, wiser, more intellectual voices into the Bitcoin space that could tell you a lot more about it. Uh, but I would just say if you're new to crypto, you must know and be watching Bitcoin. You have to know stuff like the, the halving is coming. At the time of this video, the halving is about 30 days away, so a month away. And this is a crucial market because it, it cuts in half the amount of rewards that are re rewarded or awarded to Bitcoin miners. Meaning, say there's a hunt, let's just say a thousand Bitcoin is new Bitcoin is entering into the market, being created every day. Well, the halving happens and it's half of that, right? Those aren't actual numbers, but I'm just saying then 500 
is being added to the market every day. So the supply is being cut in half. The new supply is being cut in half. And this is important because if the having happened here, right? This is November 12 or November 28, 2012. A year later, you see an all-time high in Bitcoin, okay? The having happened again in July of 2016. A year and a half-ish later, the uh, an all-time high happened, okay? The having happened in May 11, and about a year later, the, another all-time high happened. And so what happened this time is that an all-time high happened before the having. So we don't know what's going to happen. It, it, it's unlike anything that we've seen before. This is what people refer to as the Bitcoin cycles. However, we know that more money is allowed and safe now, and it's simpler for more money to pour into Bitcoin. So uh, more money, more demand is going into Bitcoin and less supply. Half the supply is coming from Bitcoin. So we could assume that Bitcoin is on an upward trajectory, but you should know some of this stuff. You should also know some of the cultural narratives that are being said, what people are saying about Bitcoin. Uh, here's one from uh, BlackRock. BlackRock's head of digital assets, Robert um, Michnik, addresses how the asset manager is thinking about uh, crypto. For our clients, Bitcoin is overwhelmingly the number one priority. And it's then a little bit of Ethereum and very little of everything else. What they're saying here is that BlackRock and all their clients are focusing in on Bitcoin. And what tends to happen in Bitcoin is money tends to roll out of Bitcoin and onto uh, large cap altcoins. And then, you know, from there, it might roll back into Bitcoin or it might go down into smaller mid or micro cap coins. I sometimes I, I doubt that's going to happen now, but this is my opinion. Uh, but it tends to happen like that. So you got to know the general sentiment of Bitcoin. Now, and you have to, Contrast that with other people who are saying JP Morgan is saying Bitcoin is still overbought, meaning it's overvalued, meaning it's probably due time for a correction. Um, another thing you should know is probably this is a tip is to order and read the Bitcoin standard. This is a book not really on Bitcoin, but the problem of money and the fiat standard. And when we understand the problem of fiat money, which is our dollar bills, and why that's a problem and why Bitcoin is a solution. It focuses, I mean, the first half of this book is not even on Bitcoin. It's just on the how money is created. If you never thought about like what money is and how it's created, this is definitely worth the buy, especially if you're getting into crypto. It will solidify and form uh, who you are and your convictions into the crypto market. And so I would definitely watch Bitcoin. Okay, that's the first tip. Number two, the second tip is prioritize longevity over efficiency okay what do i mean by this a lot of people think that i'm just going to roll into the markets and i'm going to try to sell the very bottom and or sell the very top and buy at the very bottom and that's just not likely the best traders in the world who spend 18 out of the 24 hours of the day and i know them okay i know them by name by talking to them i've been on streams with them they cannot and they would not tell you that they can accurately predict every time the clear bottom and clear top of a, you know, of a given time sector. What they prudently do is they take profits regularly or they ladder in regularly, ladder out, ladder in. And so what I mean by ladder out, ladder in is that when you see your coin of choice, let's just take Bitcoin for, for example, reach a certain level you would want to take a certain percentage out. That's all that means. So that you take it out and you buy, you'd sell your Bitcoin that you bought and you buy instead or trade it out or swap it for stable coin, okay? Now, Bitcoin is a bit of a uh, bad example for this because I personally think, and this is my opinion now, I personally think that Bitcoin is something you should never buy, sell, trade or any of that. I've, I've done that, I live that life. I prefer not to do that right now. However, if you take another coin like Book of Meme, and this is like the complete other degen, <laughs> you know, spectrum of the crypto markets. And you see it reach some kind of all time high. If a coin ever reaches an all time high, the best bet is to probably take profit. If you want some arbitrary numbers, I'm going to give you some just because you're a noob. I would take something to the tune of about 20 percent of whatever you have invested in there. So if you invested $100 and it did a 100 or 200% two, 
X or whatever, take 20% of that. And so you're going to be taking that, roll it into a stable coin. If a stable coin is just like a, a dollar back coin or a, a, a peg, peg to the dollar. And so, and then you just sit on that because it will come down. It always does. In the, in the history of everything, what goes up must come down. If you hit an all-time high, if you're lucky enough to be at an all-time high before and you never buy, never buy an all-time high, then you're going you're gonna to take 20%. And as usual, it does come back down. If you see here, it will come back down. And then you could then take that 20% and buy in right there. Or you'll never be able to time the very bottom. So you're selling here. So what ends up happening is if I bought in here, right? If I bought in right here and it would, it would sail up, I would probably take your profits right here at these levels, different levels. And then, so what if it keeps on going up? Who cares? You already made money because it's going to come crashing down and then you buy back again at the bottom. Okay. Or at levels of the bottom. And that's what I would do, especially if you're new. Stick with 20%. It's arbitrary. You could go 10%, 15%. You can make it up. But if I were you as a newbie, I'm just going to say, if I were, if I were, you're my little brother or my dad, I would be saying, okay, just do 20%. It's going to be good for you. Unless, of course, it's Bitcoin. I have a personal conviction to never sell uh, my Bitcoin. So I'll just keep on buying Bitcoin. That's a separate story. Bitcoin is unlike the rest of the crypto market. Another tip on being able to stay in longevity is to watch this. This is the fear and greed index for uh, Bitcoin. If this is in extreme greed, which I just saw the other day, this was at a 90. It is great time to take profits. If this is an extreme greed, it is a great time to take profits. How much profit are you taking? 20%. Arbitrary number, but take something, right? Just the sheer act of doing it will train your little lizard brain to be like, okay, I always got to take profits. I always got to take profits. De-risk, de-risk. Because if you got all your eggs in one basket, then you're and you're living, you're living on a prayer, dude. You're Bon Jovi living on this prayer, and you don't know what's going to happen. And you're always checking the market. You're always bugged out. You're not worried. Um, for, for people who are in Bitcoin, you you should be um, just chilling. It's up forever, in my opinion. We could go more into that in another video, but yeah, that's how I feel about uh, prioritizing longevity. Don't try to be efficient. Uh, don't care about efficiency. Care about longevity. The next point, number three, tip number three, set real expectations for yourself. Okay, and what do I mean by this? There are very various sectors to talk about expectation. The first one is time. How much time do you actually have to invest in cryptocurrency? Okay, if you have zero hours out of the day to check coin market cap, to keep up on the news, which is stuff that you have to do, to watch the charts, if you don't have any time, you got a family, you have a full time job, you get home, you say, here's what I think you should do you should buy and invest into Bitcoin and forget about it. OK, it is the safest bet. It is the clear winner without Bitcoin. Everything else topples. OK, and uh, because it, it, it's such got got such a strong narrative and strong backing, that's the coin that you can give. You could buy into and not spend not waste hours or time or effort trying to understand complicated white papers. You have to you don't have to understand anything. Lizard brain, you just buy a Bitcoin hold and it will be going up infinity it's either going to zero or infinity and it's my conviction and a lot of people other people's now you don't get this conviction that i have without without reading doing your homework you got to read the bitcoin standard you got to do your homework with this so you got to listen to michael saylor robert breedlove you got to listen to all these other guys but i have a conviction you can't take my conviction you have to form it within yourself so if you have zero time if you want to put in zero effort you just want to put money in and, and just like close your eyes and hope the magic Bitcoin just drops money in your hand. It doesn't work like that. The only option you have is Bitcoin. Okay. That's the only option you have. There are these other things where you could invest in these startup companies or these startup projects and you got to read white papers and they're confusing and you got to do your research on the team and all this kind of, and the utility, blah, 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 blah. If you want to go lizard brain and you have, but you, I want to set that expectation. That expectation could be 10 years. Okay. I, I think that one year is a good enough timeline to be in Bitcoin, just invest in Bitcoin now, one year from now, come back to it. We would have had a, a nice healthy bull run by then. Um, but I would say 10 years, 20 years, infinity. That's what, I, that's what I'm in it for. Now, if you have a lot of time to invest, if you're a young kid and you're doing a lot of research, you're getting into the, like, the different 
discords or telegrams or twitters and you're researching okay you need to set aside that time i already i know a young kid who's 19 years old 20 years old he made five figures in the bear market and he's in the, he's a degen in and out of these coins and trading and, and doing the best he can and kind of, and not trying to time the very top but just taking profits and raking it in and he's doing very very well he's got more money than i could ever imagine at his age and so uh, you have there is a time investment here. So set realistic expectations for yourself, money expectations for yourself. So some of us think that Bitcoin is the crypto is this magic land where I just hear people making thousand X returns. And then I don't know how much money that is. Let me set some realistic expectations for you. So let's just say you take Bitcoin and this is Bitcoin at it, you know, forever ago. Let's say you invested in Bitcoin in you know, January 1, 2017, where the price was about $1,000. I have a calculator here. Price was $1,000. You can see that right here. Okay. And then you invested $100. And then that was 2017. Okay, so that was what, like seven years ago. And now you decide to sell it today. How much do you think, how much money do you think you would make? You think you'd be a millionaire? Wrong. You would have $6,300. This is not life-changing Money, but this is realistic money. So I want to set your expectation. Even if you invested in Bitcoin with $100 in 2017, you would not be a millionaire. You'd be a 6000 heir. And that's enough to pay off some credit cards, pay the, pay the mortgage off. You know, that's enough. It is not life-changing money. Let's set some more expectations for you. If you bought into Solana, right? Solana right here. If you bought into it when it was $1.80, okay? A dollar and eighty four cents, and when the, why I chose that is because it's over here, January one in twenty twenty one, I believe, uh, or twenty twenty. Yeah, let's say let's call it a twenty twenty. If it was like August, okay, August of twenty twenty, this was four years ago, right? And you put in one hundred dollars. Do you think you'd be a millionaire now? Because Solana's at two hundred dollars. Wrong. Wrong, Jim. If you put in $100 and the sell price now is you're selling it today at a dollar or $100 and it's $171, you would have made $9,300. Now, that's a lot of money. That's a massive return. Anyone would love this type of return. But I want to let you know that this was four years in the making. Okay, this was 2020. It's 2024. So that is a long time. So be prepared to set your time expectations. You don't expect to roll into the crypto market and thinking you're some some G that the the world the crypto world owes you money. No, people have been here for for years, right? Through winters and through springtime, we've been here, and so you have to understand that this money will just not fly your way. Now, let's take a meme coin. So you can see I'm taking Bitcoin. I'm taking. Um, uh, mid cap or an altcoin, a large altcoin, and now I'm taking like a degen book. And the reason why I keep on coming back to Book of Meme is because it's one of the hottest meme coins out right now. So, if you took meme, this meme coin, Book of Meme, and you bought in right at its beginning, double o one, okay, less than a cent, point zero zero one, and you put in an investment of one hundred dollars, okay, here you buy, your buy price was point zero zero one and you invested $100, and you decided to sell it today at one cent, do you think you'd be a millionaire? No. No, you'd have $1,400, okay? That's how much money you'd have. That's not life-changing wealth, but you got to understand, there's a lot of heartache that goes in here. You would have rolled up, you would have you would have thought that you were going, you know, it's you plus me, Moving at the speed of light into eternity. You're going up, right? To infinity and beyond. So you would have you would have hit this excitement. You would have hit this fever. Like your, your insides would have started tingling. The hairs on the back of your neck would start st standing up. You would start, you thought you're some like crypto genius. And then if you didn't sell at the top and you just kind of kept holding and you didn't listen to my first two tips, then or my second tip or whatever. Then you ride this down, and now you're you're in distress, you're in disbelief, and you hate your life, and you want to quit your job, and you just want to sell your shoes because you think you don't have any more money. 
you would have lost. You would have kept on telling your friends, oh, I called it. I was here. And you would have told all your friends. You would start a YouTube channel saying that you're some TA analyst. And so you just ride this wave this right here. And then, you know, you're, you're, all, you're all, all over the place mentally. That's what's going to happen. But you're not going to make a million dollars. So I want to set your expectations realistically. Um, since you're new to the market, if you're a crypto noob, don't you, your investment. If your investment is low, your output will be low. If your investment is high, I mean, just add the zero, right? If you invested a thousand dollars, you would have made ten thousand dollars, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's that tip. Um, you know, just just set your real expectations. Here's the next tip: commit to a goal, and this kind of goes hand in hand with the previous tip, setting realistic expectations. What do you want to do? For me. I wanted to earn one Bitcoin and I earned my first Bitcoin within six months of me really starting to trade. And I devoted a lot of time and energy. I put money into the into the game. I learned a lot of lessons um, and I started joining a lot of uh, putting my brain to, with a lot of other people here. And I started like learning a lot. I committed to a goal and I accomplished the goal. And since then, I've been able to achieve some wealth that I would have never been able to achieve without crypto ever. Man, I'm so grateful for crypto, and that's why I want to pass on this knowledge that took me four years and a lot of money to learn. And uh, I think it's one of those things where you have to do the same. Do you want to earn one Bitcoin? Maybe not. Maybe you don't care about Bitcoin. Do you want to earn $1,000? Okay, so if you want to earn $1,000 extra, is that period? Is that a month? Well, you got to understand like, okay, if I'm committed to the goal, then I have to also commit to the corresponding actions and effort and time commitments that is needed for that. So if you're going to commit to, I want $100,000, just say it, you want $100,000. Well, how, what's the best way to do that? Do, do I have the time and effort and energy? No. Okay. So then I'm going to get into Bitcoin. That, that's what I'm going to do. If I do have time, effort, and I think I could, I could accurately buy and sell you know, different meme coins, altcoins, and I have a little time to devote to this thing, then maybe that's the route too, because that's what I did. I mean, I can't hate on anyone who's wanting to invest in meme coins. I made five figures per trade trading on these crazy meme coins. It's it's all documented on my YouTube channel. If you want to go back, I have no problem with you doing that. But yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, I would just commit to a goal. Okay, that's that's that point. Uh, the next point here, the next tip, commit to a sector, okay? Commit to a sector. Now, w going back to the tip that we talked about having, there are, there are major narratives at play in the crypto world. These narratives are important because these are what drive um, momentum or what we're calling volume or dollars in the ecosystem. So, for example, uh, a major narrative last bull run was the metaverse narrative, a lot of money was pouring into the metaverse. The, you want to live in this digital space and you get the, the Oculus and you're living in this like polygon world and you could take a, take, a, take a meta crap and eat a meta sausage and you could swim a meta sea and you could do all this kind of stuff. But that metaverse narrative was hot in 2021. But then we found out that there was like no one using the metaverse. No one was living in there. The future was not in the metaverse. Everyone actually thought it was dorky. <laughs> and so that narrative has gone down now. That's not a narrative that I hear about. And no one's really excited about metaverse stuff. So Decentraland is probably not a great buy. At least I don't think so. Or, um, you know, any any of those other meta metaverse stuff. I think even Facebook got caught in that whole <laughs> metaverse meta thing uh, narrative. But now the narrative is AI. The meta narrative is gaming. I think the meta narrative and, and there, there are different narratives here, right? And you have to be able to commit to a sector because you have to learn a lot of these things. There's different narratives, right? There's, there's different niches, different sectors. You have layer ones, you have real world assets, you have deep in, you have all this stuff. And the, the point of this video is not to highlight each one of these things, but to show you that the importance of picking a niche is because it, there's, there tends to be a lot of information and a lot of, uh, you know, shifting sentiment regarding these narratives. Look at this. BlackRock enters asset tokenization race with a new fund on the Ethereum network. So tokenization is a big thing. Real world assets. 
uh, check out this one. So this one's regarding, um, let's see here, Runestones. This is NFTs. Runestone NFTs lead the charge in multi-chain marketplace sales. Okay. So you got to know if you're in NFTs, which is another sector, you got to know what a runestone is because that thing is making a ton of money for a lot of people. Uh, a lot of my boys are making a lot of money, thousands of dollars making money selling and buying runestones. Okay. There's another one, AI. AI crypto sector stands tall amid the market decline. Economy bolsters by $7 billion in just 30 days. So we see that the AI narrative is doing very, very well. And then large currencies fall as Solana tumbles. So if you're in Solana and that's your niche and you want to learn about that, you got to know that uh, there was money pouring into Solana, but not so much anymore. It's one of those things. So if I were to give you a few you know, suggestions for uh, what narratives are going today, you want to make sure that there's a lot of volume in there. A lot of people care about this narrative. There, you don't have to search for this thing. You don't want to fight the narratives. You want to go with the trends. You want to go with the strength. You want to go with the volume. And so I would suggest to you AI is a great place to start. It's uh, exciting, sexy, you know, like it, it, it's, it's a good place for you to start learning about. I would say gaming, if you're if that's in your case too, that a lot of big channels, a lot of people are pushing gaming. But I, I'm, I'm a little wary on gaming because it has to be a good game. You know what I mean? But AI seems to be doing really well right now. Um, and so those are two, you could go into real world assets, you could go into NFTs, uh, that's all options for you as well. Don't be scared to go where the volume is, okay? A lot of people think that, oh, I want to go where the volume is not. No, you don't, okay? You want to go where the volume is, where people are, where the money uh, is, is pouring into and where people are talking. Last but not least um, is join communities. This is my last tip, number seven. Join communities. And you could do this with Twitter. This is my Twitter. You could follow me there. Uh, but you, you could go to Twitter and you could find these communities. You could join a Bitcoin community. You could go on Telegram. You could use Discord. You could go on a YouTube community. It's very easy to find these communities. You just type it in the search bar. So if something you're looking for is like AI, like AI crypto, AI crypto, um, you, you'll just any one of these will pull up and you just kind of go through and you start searching like this guy Johnny is talking about AI Arkham token metrics you could just go into Lark knows some big AI narratives you know so you, you just have to search and find what personalities fit your style you could go into discords you could go around anywhere just search just start searching you 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 want to find a place where you could test your own opinions with other people you could learn from them especially if you're new it keeps you up to date uh, and it keeps you involved in the know, in the trenches with these particular coins, these niches, niches, these sectors, and these narratives. Anyways, guys, I wish you all the best in your crypto journey. If you want to know more about being a beginner in crypto, hit the like, share, subscribe on this, uh, you know, on this video. Um, I hit the notification bell; that'd be great. And join me on the live stream. That's where I'm able to talk and you know feedback with you. And in the comments section below, I'm giving away Cardano NFTs. If you want a Cardano NFT for free, just type in what tip resonated with you the most. Which one of those tips resonated with you the most down in the comment section below if you made it this far. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video.